10.30. Get everybody happy with recording. So thank you very much um, for attending today. Those of you that have not had the opportunity to join one of these forums before, my name is Dawn Blee from the Sevenoaks District Chamber of Commerce. And we developed this forum to um, design to support local businesses in their journey towards net zero and a sustainability along the way. And uh, you should all have an opportunity to see the agenda up today. And I'm very grateful to Emily Haswell from Seven X District Council and Paul Baker from Wilden Properties who will be presenting today. And we did have a third speaker who is no longer available to come and uh, present today on the Seven Oaks Cycle Way. So we'll keep that for a, another occasion. Um, there's been quite a lot of water under the bridge since our last um, meeting. And please, that is no, no intended pun along uh, global warming or anything else along the way. So please don't take that one in. Um, but there seems to have been also a, a slight change in the sort of temperature of local businesses. Businesses around here seem to be very much still heads down in survival mode and that principles such as net zero, net zero and sustainability don't appear to be so much of as a priority as we had anticipated. And uh, I'm getting comments such as, yeah, I've got principles and I want to put them into practice, but they're expensive. I cannot afford that at the moment. Survivability of the operation is all important. And I think this is probably our time to start thinking about it's becoming necessary to now adapt that ethos of sustainability towards the pragmatic and the practical. That there are ways and means of doing things, of saving the planet that don't have to cost a fortune. And in fact, they can save us money in organizations. And that's very much what um, our presenters will be talking about and also assisting us along that. So we've got a focus for today. Um, so there can be advantages to organisations, to uh, businesses, as well as to the planet by adopting sustainable practices. So it isn't just for one end, it is practical within that as well. Um, but before we begin the presentations, it might be a good idea because we're going to have the opportunity for a forum later on just to introduce uh, yourselves to each other, um, because we can then be able to sort of bounce more ideas around later on. So, uh, Yaki, you appear at the middle of my screen. So can I ask you, please, to just introduce yourself? Yaki, are you with us? Starts to become a bit like a seance, doesn't it? Oh, OK, that isn't going to make life very simple then, is it? Um, I've just got a message from Yaki that um, she has no mic, unfortunately, so she's going to be listening only. Uh, she's going to call in instead. OK. OK, we'll carry on then, Yaki, for the moment and wait to hear from you in a second. So if I could go over to uh, Marilyn Kane instead, please, if you would introduce yourself to everyone that's here. Um, hello, I'm Marilyn Kenney. I'm uh, a town councillor and have been for a long time and a district councillor until May the 4th. Um, and we have, a, a, on the town council, we have developed a green investment plan and are, are focusing all our business on trying to achieve those aims. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, Tony, I see you've just joined us. Um, we're just getting to introductions. We've just been through the agenda just briefly. So um, thank you. Not Martin too much Davis, missed just yet. Town District Councillor. Thank you. <clears throat> um, and who else have we got? Laura, please. Yeah, hi. Um, I, uh, my name is Laura. I'm uh, operations manager for a company called Unicomp, who are based out of Borough Green. Um, and uh, we are, are a distribution and repair company for printer spare parts. Um, and we've just recently got our 14,001 uh, certification accreditation. So we're just looking for some further information about how sustainability practices might be able to benefit our business. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Yankee, I got a quick message that you are now on. So if you'd like to introduce yourself now. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yes, all good. Fabulous. Um, hi, I'm Yassi Cook and I work for Graham Watt, who is um, a patent and trademark attorney in Seven Oaks. I'm the operations manager here and um, part of our strategy going forward for the next year, uh, financial year, is uh, looking at sustainability and how we can um, approach that and um, put the principles into place um, at a cost effective manner exactly how you said earlier and that they're the challenges that I'm facing as well that we're in survival mode still and um, to be able to put those practices um, right into the heart of the business and make sure that we're we're following through for the whole year that's what we're trying to do right lovely thank you very much for that and um, Paul Baker you're, you're the only yeah, one I'm Paul from Wilden Properties. Um, we're a, a, a landlord down here in the uh, mainly in the bat and ball area of Seven Oaks. Um, we have um, 90, 90 units that we're um, responsible for, and uh, we let them out our, our, ourselves and manage them. So um, around um, sustainability, most of our thinking so far has been that if we can get each of our 90 tenants to make a small a small change, that would be quite um, a substantial improvement and I'll be talking a bit more about that later. Great, thank you very much indeed. And Emily, it might be, be a good way of sort of segueing you in to give your introduction and then moving into your presentation. Absolutely, thanks Dawn. Um, I know some of you on the call, for those that don't know me, I'm Emily Haswell, I'm Economic Development Officer at Seven Oaks District Council. Um, so what I'm going to do is just share my screen and go straight on to the presentation so bear with me while I get the tech working okay and I'm hoping you can all see my presentation now yes yeah lovely yep. okay um so some pretty pictures to start off with um but I wanted to, to include some other things alongside the brief today to talk about the green business grants I wanted to give a bit of an overview of some of the other programs we're doing that will be relevant to local businesses. So I hope you don't mind me extending my remit slightly. Um, first of all, I'm part of the economic de development team at the district council. Um, what we do is a lot of um, activities around um, supporting businesses. So any business that has a query, any business that wants some assistance, we're a point of contact. So please do use us as that. Um, and I'm going to go through a number of schemes today that we're doing to liaise directly and support businesses, as well as the green business grants, which is is the main point of um, talking about today, really. Um, so on to the next slide. I wanted to talk about Meeting Point Swanley. So this is a co-working centre which we're going to launch um, next week. Uh, I think pre-launch pre next week and final launch the following week. Um, so it's a new build. We have constructed the building ourselves um, with um, flats above. Um, all the flats have air source heat pumping pumps in, and it is meant to be as energy efficient as any any new build can be. I don't know the details of all that, but if anyone's interested in the building standards we're using, let me know and I can put you in touch. But the main thing for businesses is we've got a co-working space on the ground floor offering all those things on the slide there. Um, and some pictures there for those of the, you that won't have seen those already. As you can see, it's a high street location, but we've got a lovely green area out, out the rear of the building, which is shared with the flats and the business hub. Um, so that's just sort of flagging up that that's one of our projects opening soon. Um, and further information in the website is there. I will ask Catherine to share a copy of my slides. So all the links and websites you can pick up and, and peruse at your leisure. Um, on to the next project. We've recently launched some business support scheme funded by the UK Share Prosperity Fund, which is part of the UK government's levelling up agenda. And um, basically this is a free business support service for across West Kent. So any West Kent business. So the website there is key to register your interest, um, find out what it's all about. And we have a launch event on the 11th of May, um, date only booked yesterday, I think. So um, please pop that in your diaries. And when you get the slides, you'll be able to look at that. 
The scheme itself is going to include some free business mentoring. So um, in, in many subjects and general support, um, we're hoping it's going to dovetail nicely with the, the services already offered by the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so we'll make sure that the, the two are working in tandem. Um, we've got some training and networking as part of that scheme, hybrid format events. So um, avoiding travel for those, those that don't want to travel or aren't able to, um, with some networking sessions as well, like local co-working spaces. So going to where businesses already are rather than other venues. We're going to have an annual festival of business. So more information on that to come. Um, that won't be for a little while yet. And the online portal is live now um, prior to the launch with training sessions, ability to register for events and a business support helpline. So as I said, all free of charge. So please do use these services. Um, and now onto the main bit that I, I think was on the agenda for me to talk about today is our green business grant scheme. So this is funded again through the UK government shared prosperity fund as part of the leveling up agenda, hence the logos on the bottom and the long spiel introducing it. As always, they never give us simple titles for these schemes. We're delivering this one in partnership with Seven Oaks District Council working with Tunbridge and Morling Borough Council. Um, and we're doing that because Tunbridge and Morling have had a green business grant scheme for some time. So rather than us reinventing the wheel, we're, we're jointly working with them. Um, but all Seven Oaks applicants will be funded by Seven Oaks funding. So we're not diluting our funding at all. Um, capital grants to help reduce businesses' carbon footprint. Um, application window is currently open. So we opened on the 18th and we're open till the 31st of May. There is a limited amount of funding, particularly in this, this financial year. So if we don't spend it all, there may be another round, but really, I'd like to encourage people to apply in this first round wherever possible, because I can't guarantee that second round. Um, we've got two types of grants. So the Section A grants are for those that are in the low carbon sector. Um, there is a list on our guidance of the 17 um, different sectors that come under this um, designation. Um, this is up to £8,000, as it says on the slide there. 40% of business development initiatives. And as noted there, the idea is it's for research and development, physical infrastructure, which can be expansion, relocation, um, equipment and machinery. Or you can make the case for any other things if you're within that sector that may be relevant to you. And the Section B grants, I think these are probably the more general grants for any sector. Um, taking measures to reduce carbon footprint. So from experience in Tumbridge and Walling that have been doing this for a while, this has been things like um, LED lighting, improved lighting, improved sustainability me measures in your building, similar to those that were, if anyone was familiar with the low case scheme, which was run by Low Carbon Kent, it's similar kind of um, spend is what we're expecting on this scheme. Um, up to £5,000, 40% of costs. And we have got some priority sectors there, um, but I think I'm looking at it quite broadly in that any business that wants to take measures to reduce their carbon footprint can apply and we'll assess them all equally. Um, but I think we've got the priorities there just to say that these industries are perhaps a little behind some of the others in getting these measures in place. So that's why we've highlighted priority sectors. Um, a little bit on conditions. So planning permission will be need, need to be secured. We haven't got a long time frame for delivery. Um, so we do ask for permissions to be secured, um, planning permission, building control, anything you might need to do along those lines early on in the process. Um, we can't fund stuff that's already happened. So no re retrospective or work already started. So please do come to us get that approval before you start any work. Um, can only apply for A or B rather than both. Um, and I think that's probably understandable why that 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 is in place. And the business must be located within Seven Oaks District Council, Tunbridge and Morling, and or Tunbridge and Morling rather, and have a commercial premises. The definition of the commercial premises is slightly undefined at the moment in that 
Um, there's various questions like, does a vehicle count as a commercial premises? And I don't think we've worked through the details of that yet. Um, but I think the location within the district may lead us a certain way on that one. There are full details in the guidance notes because there's lots of other terms and conditions um, as well, but do have a read of those guidance notes. And just to flag up that the link does direct you to Tunbridge and Morling's website. That's fine for Seven Oaks applicants too. They're managing the application process for us. So don't panic if you go through the link and it takes you to Tunbridge and Morling. Um, we're completing all our Seven Oaks assessments and allocating our Seven Oaks funding, but they're looking after the application process for us. So a link there to the guidance notes and a queries email address, which will be circulated on the slides. Um, this is a very new scheme. We've not done this before, so we are learning a little bit as we go along, but I'm hoping that it'll be a valuable resource for businesses just to help take some of those small measures. Um, just moving on, I just wanted to flag up the place campaign that we've got as it's a district campaign that was launched uh, about 18 months ago now. I think it was quite a while. Um, this is all about encouraging people to live, work, invest and visit in the district. It's celebrating what we already have. Um, it's featuring local businesses, encouraging people that that we've got quite a, uh, we've got a really active business community. We've got lots of opportunities. Um, so I just wanted to take this opportunity to flag this up to you, as well as the free business directory um, that we're encouraging as many businesses as possible to sign up there um, to help identify the the huge variety of active businesses we've got in the district. So the website is there. And I just wanted to flag up a coming soon. So this is one that I will be talking to the chamber more about Dawn. So we'll talk more about this one is the West Kent Rural Business Grants. So we've got an additional half a million pounds to fund from the Rural England Prosperity Fund. Another one of those complicated names, apologies. Um, so this is capital funding to go direct to businesses and or community organisations, social enterprises um, based in rural areas. Their rural def definition is quite generous and covers almost the entire district. Um, and we're going to be offering up to 25k capital grants with a 50% grant intervention rate. So this is a really big one to flag up coming soon and we hope that some of the measures within this scheme will also support businesses on their sustainability journey as well. Um, and then finally, just for, for those that don't have already my ridiculously long job title, so apologies for that one, um, my direct email address. I have talked about uh, three email addresses during this presentation. We have business at Seven Oaks, business grants at Seven Oaks, and my direct one there. So. Happy for you to contact me on any one of those um, or, or any other member of the team that the other ones go to and always keen to talk to businesses about how we can help support and give you information about these schemes and the other bits we do really. So I'm going to stop sharing at that point so I can see people again. There we go. Um, I'm happy to take questions now, Dawn, or later on in the, the agenda as you, you see fit. Right. Well, thank you very much for that. And I think if anyone has a question that um, has come up straight away from Emily's presentation, this may be the moment. And we've also got Andy Horner, who's had a chance to join us. And Tony, I see that you'd like to have a question as well. If we could just go to Andy first of all. Andy, could you just introduce yourself to everybody in the um, in the chat room? Chat room? Are we a chat room? No, forum. Good morning, um, Andy Horner. Can you hear me OK? Yes, we can. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, I'm afraid my camera doesn't work. Uh, I'm the bursar at Walthamstow Hall um, in the uh, town, so um, just joining for um, uh, to listen in. Lovely. Thank you very much. It's great to have you with us. I don't Thank know you. how much you managed to hear of Emily's presentation before you were able to get in, but her notes will be circulated, and I think um, some of the grants will certainly be of interest to yourselves yeah. as well. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Tony, Tony Clayton, over yeah, to you. I just want to ask Emily a question. Uh, is, the, is the scheme that you're now running similar to the one that Tunbridge and Morling have been running 
in earlier years or is it different? Yeah, it's pretty much the same scheme as they've been running in previous years. They're mm. now funding it from the UK Share Prosperity Fund from their right. allocation. Um, and we said, let's join with you and do that with yeah, our I think allocation. Should, I, think, I think it's a really good idea. And there's, there's one really good thing you could get out of that, which is case studies. Now, if, you, if, you, if you've got people who can tell a story about what they've done, it's, it's a really good way of getting new people to say, oh, I could do that. Um, and, you know, it gives them an idea of what sorts of businesses, what sorts of projects and how easy it is to do. And, they're, you know, they're, they're, and they're right next door, you know. So that <clears throat> so if you, if you could get that out of Tomridge and Morning, it'd be really great. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I mean, you're absolutely right, Tony. I think the, the thing that, that is most um, important is that businesses see the opportunities around yeah. sustainability. And I think mm. many businesses don't realise that the small measures can make a big difference. Mm. So we'll, we'll definitely do some promotion around that. Well, especially because, you know, saving energy saves you a shed load of money. You know, it saves you three times as much as it did 18 months ago. <laughs> so. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Uh, Andy, you've still got a hands up signal on your screen. Do you have a question? Or is that just where you came in? Sorry, no, I haven't um, put anything up. I do bring it back. Okay, don't worry. Uh, anybody else, any questions for Emily at this stage? No, okay, well, I've, I've been asked to put one to you, Emily, and it concerns what you were saying about commercial premises and the definition of commercial premises, um, bearing in mind that through all things that have been happening in the last few years, many more people are working from home. Is there any way that a home office can ever be defined as a commercial premises for something that is now, um, I saw that were, uh, one of the items that came up was retail premises. If somebody has a home office where they are now doing purely online, for example, would they be able to claim for a new boiler, which is heating the domestic house, but um, also has the office within that domestic house, residential property? I don't think I have a definite answer for that one, Dawn. Um, I think the way I'd go forward with it is encourage people to apply. Um, we haven't got set guidance on this is our definition of commercial premises, um, but I do think it is worth any applications coming through. And we would, we then have a scoring matrix to work out whether they go forward or not. So I, I would encourage everyone to apply. I don't think a home office would necessarily be a, definite no but I think priority would probably go to a business with a commercial premises um, based on the fact that commercial premises are, are often quite difficult to heat and it is going 100% to the business rather than a home address which is going partially to the business and partially to the home um, so I think it's worth putting in that application um, one that we haven't quite got a definite answer to yet but I think worth a try <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions for Emily at this point? No? Okay, thank you very much, Emily. And Paul, if we could move over to you, please. Uh, you're on mute at the moment, Paul. Computer's a bit slow this morning. Is that okay now? That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, morning, everyone. Um, Dawn asked me just to um, give a short presentation today because we are um, a landlord, as you know, here in um, Baton Ball, and to just give some sort of um, feedback and some um, stories, really, about the sorts of things that we've um, that we've been doing over the past um, the past few few years. Um, I think when we talk about um, sustainability on um, property um, it can fall into two areas first one we've got is um, structural and by that I might be talking the things about flooding land landslides um, perhaps not in Seven Oaks but um, coastal erosion may be another sort of thing that we're um, talking about and then the um, second thing I think is regards around um, energy efficiency sustainability how the building is used and um, that's the that's the sort of area that I'm going to focus on this morning. Um, next slide, please, Catherine. Um, 
so the main the main measure of the um, efficiency of a, um, a building is the um, EPC, which stands for the Energy Performance Certificate, and you get ratings from A to F. A being considered the most uh, the most um, efficient building, F being the, the the least efficient building, and I think to try and um, to try and get some traction on this. Um, the government have started to in introduce um, restrictions um, that uh, a building has to have a minimum EPC rating in order for you to let it. Uh, the most recent one being is that um, buildings uh, have to have um, a minimum E rating for them to be let. And there's um, rumours, quite strong rumours at the moment, that from 2028, residential properties have got to have a C rating in order for them to be uh, to be uh, capable of being let 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 out. Um, there's also talk about commercial units would need to have a B rating from 2030. With all the stats show that 85% um, of commercial buildings in the UK at the moment don't don't reach that level. So unless work were to be done, 85% um, of buildings would need um, an upgrade of some some sort. Um, next slide, Catherine. Right. Um, so with regards to these um, upgrades in the en energy rating, um, some things are quite quite um, simple. Um, energy efficient light 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 bulbs can, in some cases, move you up from one rating to the next the next rating. Um, loft in insulation is always a good one. Then you get into perhaps more um, costly things such as um, cavity wall insulation, new heating systems. Um, some of the things that we've done for tenants here is um, we've done a lot of um, ins insulating lofts in the flats. We've got one um, commercial tenant that sort of has an, an office with a warehouse attached and um, they found that they kept leaving the lights on during the warehouse all, all, all day because basically it was too much of a pain to turn the lights on and off the whole the, the, the whole time. So um, as part of them agreeing to a new, a new lease, we installed um, PIR lighting in the warehouse so the lights only come on when someone's in there. So that's a good um, example, of the sort of things that we've been um, looking at. Um, we have been looking at um, solar panels on some of our um, buildings. Um, they are quite costly, so perhaps quite a long payback time. And um, they do need planning as well. Um, quite interesting, just picking up on something that um, Emily said earlier, that for some of these grants, you need, you need planning. Um, notice the grants only available to the 31st of May, but planning takes eight, eight weeks at least. So no, for this particular round of grants, that ship may have may have sailed. Um, the costs. I think the real the real challenge is that um, the upfront costs can be significant. Um, in most cases, it will be uh, the types of things that we're talking about on this on this slide. There'll be costs for the landlord to pay, but it's the tenant that's going to be the benefit. Okay, you may argue that if the um, if it's improving the EPC rating and it moves it from a building that wouldn't be capable of letting to a building that is now capable of being let let out obviously that's a benefit to the land the landlord without 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 question but most of the things we're talking about um revolving more um efficient buildings and lower energy energy costs which the tenants going to be going to uh, uh, feel the benefit from but it's the landlord to pay the costs um at the moment, there is a maximum cost or a maximum spend to improve the EPC on um, a building. So I think if you spend three and a half thousand pounds, but you still can't reach the minimum rating, you get an um, ex exemption that allows you to let that building out. Um, again, there's rumours that that cost is going to go up to ten thousand um, pounds. We'll see. We'll see if that comes to um, if that um, comes to the fore. Um, next slide, Catherine. Okay, so as we sit here, there's still many unanswered questions um, about um, many things, really. Um, just been speaking about the costs. 
some um, I mentioned um, these thresholds of three and a half thousand and ten ten thousand pounds. Um, there's still no clarity as to whether that cost includes VAT or not. Um, Wilden isn't isn't that registered, so ten ten thousand suddenly becomes twelve thousand. Um, if if you're not allowed to include the VAT, um, there's still lots of rumours about the timescales and whether these um, new minimum ratings are going to be from 2028 or 2030 or 2025. Um, no, there's no no real clarity yet. And um, I said the fairness as well. So for um, two things I want to mention here is um, firstly. They're talking about um, three and a half thousand or ten thousand pound maximum spend. That doesn't seem to be in relation to the size of the building. So you could have a little shop in Hollybush Lane, or you could have um, a big um, industrial warehouse down on Cramptons Road. At the moment, the maximum spend to improve your EPC rating is the same for both. And um, still quite a focus on the um, rental sector as well. So, um, as I said, from 2028, if I've got um, uh, if I've got a flat that's below a C rating, um, I'm not allowed to rent that out. Um, I'm quite happy to say that the house the house where I live and own um, has a C uh, has a rating below C, but I'm still able to live there and use that property from 2028. But I wouldn't be able to use it if I were a, if I were a tenant. Um, now, I don't for one minute want to give you the impression that I'm, I'm on my landlord's soapbox and um, using this as a, um, an opportunity to say how unfair it is and all the pressures on the landlord. Um, that's not the case at all. Now, I know that um, Dawn said earlier in her in introduction that really some of the sustainability things are taking a back a back seat and you know, people are more in um, survival mode and um so i would i would agree with that certainly with regards to energy costs and um some of our tenants are having to pay um the business rates for the first time since april so these are things which are impacting them here and now but certainly when we have um, a unit or a, or a flat coming up for let um, the energy situation, the EPC rating is coming into the conversation, which is quite interesting, really. So um, let's give a couple of examples. Say if you were looking to rent a flat with me and maybe you've got um, children around the age of three or four and you're looking to secure a flat that allows them to go to that school for the next six or seven years. Yet the energy, the energy rating is below below C. Some tenants are starting to say, well, what is the landlord going to do? How can I be sure that I'm going to be able to stay here for the next six, seven years? Um, I don't want to find that I'll be um, um, kicked out after three or four because um, the flats no longer meets the en energy standards to be let. And one of the hardest things there is that as a landlord, we don't actually know. As we say, these are all rumours that it might be C from 2028 or it might be pushed back or it might be pushed forward. Um, perhaps uh, a change of government may may uh, may uh, change some of these things around as well. And then, if you're looking to take um, a commercial property from me, perhaps um, it's not so much of an issue if you've just got a a, a couple of desks and a, a PC. You're quite portable. But say you're going to take a retail premises or a restaurant, and you're looking to actually invest some money in fixtures and fittings. You might be investing ten, fifteen thousand, but the back of your mind you might have the fact that well I've been reading in the media that uh, commercial buildings need to be a B rating from 2030 this isn't a B rating what if the 2030 um, timeline gets brought forward no is it really worth me investing my 10 15 thousand pounds in the fabric of the building how long am I going to have to get that money back uh, and these are some of the questions which aren't aren't regular but they are becoming more 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 regular than they were so these are the questions as a landlord that we're getting and people taking much more interest about the energy ratings not necessarily from how efficient is it to run but um from certainty of tenure how long am i going to be able to stay here for and are there any any regulations that mean i'm going to have to leave next slide Catherine. 
So summary. So um, I suppose this is where I am on my soapbox, really. Um, but I suppose um, I'm speaking on behalf of the tenants as well as on, on behalf of ourselves as a landlord as well. What we really need is a set of rules which we know will not be changed. So rules which don't say it's going to be this day, it's going to be that day, it's going to be this rating. We need certainty. Um, there needs to be a balance of costs versus um, the benefits as well. So um, need to be sure that I um, you know, don't want to spend. Let's take the example of cavity wall in insulation, which seems to be um, one of the main ways to get the rating up. We spoke about the uh, minimum spend of three and a half thousand, either with or without VAT. But um, you can't go to a cavity wall installer and say, I'll have three and a half thousand pounds worth of cavity wall in insulation. They either do it or they don't. And the cost might be seven or eight thousand um, pounds. So we need to get this balance between uh, the benefits and the costs. And then there also needs to be a sufficient timeline for um, implementation as well. Uh, my own personal view is that if we needed to bring the, the commercial units up to up to scratch, then we'd probably need a 10 year timeline, at least. A um, couple of reasons for that is one to actually spread the cost of the works out. Um, and the second reason is a number of these works can't be done while the tenants there. So the tenants either got to close, close, close down, even for a few few days, or you've got to wait for the tenant to move on before these works can be done. So we need a, um, a sufficient timeline for everything to be put in place. Um, my final summary point, and I think this is a, a general feel across um, all people that I speak to in the property in industry, is um, we need to reach a point where any regulation or legislation is seen as a positive change towards the environment rather than an additional burden or costs for landlords uh, and uh, the businesses. At the moment, I think we're still in the second part and we need to see the evidence that things that are actually being done or were being asked to do will actually make a change uh, moving forwards. Um, happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for that, Paul. It um, really clarifies a lot of the difficulties that are out there with any new change like this. And it's great to see some ways that you have been able to get past that. Um, but clearly many other obstacles along the way. Um, Andy, uh, your little hand is up again. Um, so I'm hoping that is a question and it isn't just I've ignored it all the way through this point. So please do take uh, the opportunity to address Paul. Uh, no, I haven't got my hand up. No, uh, okay. I'm sorry. It's, it must I'm be a real one if I have clicked up. something, but um, it, it's definitely, I haven't uh, clicked anything. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Tony, you were indicating you wish to yeah, come. I, I, thought that, I thought it was a really interesting perspective and and, and very helpful. Um, and I think I think the I mean I've I've worked in businesses where the directors wouldn't take um, grants from government because they didn't know whether by the time they came to spend the money the grants would still be there. No, so certainty is really important, actually making sure that that you know what's going to happen over the period when you're going to spend the money and get the return. I mean, how how far ahead do you think the reg the the Paul, how far ahead Paul do you think the 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 framework needs to be stable? I mean, presumably it's based on the sort of period over which you look for payback, isn't it? Um. Could be, yes. I mean, um, now let's take one of the more extreme examples of solar solar panels. You know, mm. they may yeah. they may be 20, 25 year payback. Um, so that might be um expecting a bit a bit too much. Um, but if you sort of um perhaps work on the basis that the average lease for a commercial building is five, five years. Mm. And then, as I said before, you know, it might be that um, you need to wait for the tenant to move out before some of these works can be done. Um, I think if if we went with this timeline of at least um, 10 years, then um, you could, I think that would be a lot easier for landlords to deal with. Maybe some of the middle ground would be that um, if it was to be for 
such a long period of time, landlords would have to submit a plan, uh, maybe to show what they intend to do and where that may be um, uh, a middle ground. I think one of the other things that I haven't mentioned, which um, does tend to drive um, the behaviour of the landlord sometimes, um, is the banks. Yeah. So uh, we have we have loans against our properties, um, and I'm already getting questions from my lender you now that. You know, a lot of your properties don't meet the B the B rating. You know, how are you going to deal with this between now and 2030? Um, so I suppose um, if you're sort of looking to take a 10 or a 15 year loan from a bank, the bank's going to be looking and saying, right, we need to be certain that all these properties can generate in income for the period of that loan. And at the moment, that's not the case. So maybe if again, if we went for the 10 year period, um, that would give the bank some certainty as well that they could give you a 10 year loan against your properties, knowing that they would be lettable for that for that period of time. So like a lot of things, I think there's a number of things to throw into the melting pot. Yeah. And a lot of people with different um, priorities or different different needs that need um, balancing out. Right. Thank you very much on that one. Uh, Marilyn, I see that uh, you've indicated you have a question. Yes, I have, please. Um, in this area, we have many listed ancient buildings, both in the domestic uh, buildings and in business buildings. Um, have you any idea how these are going to be affected by these new rules? Um, many, you know, I know people who rent out uh, very old buildings, very difficult to bring to um, B rating for energy efficiency. And the same with, with some of the commercial buildings, certainly in the center of Seven Oaks, the business owners would like to make improvements uh, and just don't know what to do because the conservation officers also have a say in all this. Yeah, um, <laughs> certainly, and that's quite, um, it's quite a pertinent um, um, topic. So I'm actually talking to my um, energy assessor now um because um Hollybush Lane where we own a number of commercial units is in a conservation area and you're right there's there's only certain things that you can that you can do uh and so where we are at the uh, moment is some some things that would see the e EPC rating improved wouldn't get wouldn't get planning permission or wouldn't get building control sign off so um the question at the moment is then is if you're not allowed to do anything do you get an um exemption as a landlord if you've done yes, everything, yes. if you've done everything that you're allowed to do does that mean you then get an exemption but um we're still waiting for an answer to that to that question um obviously my view would be it's much better to have an exemption than just to leave the building em em empty because what's that what's that going to do for the um community um but um you know hopefully we're going to get an answer on that in the next few months i i know some of the conservation officers uh there, there are changes happening in some of these essential improvements to to old buildings will have to happen mm. for the sake of the more general environment um so it's a moving situation isn't it it is it is and um Perhaps um, perhaps the penny really drops, doesn't it? When sometimes people un un understand the 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 possible size or the impact of the problem, uh, yeah. and then, you know the different the, you know the different parts of government then start speaking to each other, and we try and come up with some sort of compromise or um, middle ground. You've said something very important there about us all speaking together to try and find a good solution. Uh, only, I only wish that that could happen. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and the town council, like Seven Oaks Town Council, I think would be very interested to talk to, with you about some of these issues. Thank you very much, Thank Paul. Thanks, Marilyn. Thank you, you Marilyn. Uh, Emily, you're indicating you have a hand up. Sorry, almost forgot to unmute then. Um, just to pick up on a couple of things that, that, that you covered, Paul. And um, firstly, building on, on that discussion with Marilyn, um, I would recommend that, that you do 
liaise with our, our conservation officers, our planning team, um, and it, those that have buildings that are going to be difficult to amend and adjust, then keep that dialogue open. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you do that, Paul, already, so just for others on the call. And similarly, we you mentioned planning in terms of the um, business grants. And yes, planning and permissions will be required, but that shouldn't preclude people from putting an application in. So pop the application in. Right. It just may be that the offer of finance is subject, subject to, to planning. Yeah. planning. Um, because we do have the finance over this financial year and next financial year. Um, so it could be that those that take a bit longer can be allocated funding from next year's just to cover that time. So yeah, please don't let that be a barrier. No. Okay. The funding Thanks is there to help. So yeah. please do pass that on to the businesses you work with as well. Will do. And keep keep the dialogue open for those businesses that need to talk to our planning team. Um, we have our team around your business service, which helps with liaison with any council teams. So come to us, we can help sort of make those discussions happen um, and get people the help they need so they know what's likely to happen in terms of approvals. Mm -hmm. We can never predict exactly, but we can keep the dialogue open. Sure. Thanks, Emily. Good. Uh, anybody got any other questions for Paul? Okay, well, I think those are two very useful presentations um, of what can be taken forward and some of the practicalities behind that. And knowing that we do have some backing, at least with the grants as well, which is uh, good news for the future. Um, right, I suppose that this is the moment we can come to an open forum. And possibly if we treat it almost like sort of AOB and go around to everybody and say what else it is you would want from a forum like this, or that you could give to it, or something that you would wish to have included in a future um, session that we hold. Um, and Tony, I think knowing that you've got something coming up quite soon that you might wish to talk about, I think possibly we should start with you. Oh, um, okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not really got a good answer to the question you just asked. Um, probably, I mean, the most important thing is to get more people into this group, I think, because so, I think you know, there's, there's a lot of, of issues where I think it really helps people to share what's going on. So you know, people think that it's hard to do things and they find somebody else in the town who's, who's actually done the the improvements or which is why I was interested in Emily's um, no, the, the potential for cases from the schemes that Emily's already connected with so and I think that's a really important thing to do hello it's gone oh, oh, it's just we're giving you a little showcasing yeah. climate oh, right, okay well. yes I'm 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 um, on the group that's been helping to organize the Seven Oaks Climate Fair which is designed to do precisely that there are a number of businesses who are exhibiting in, in the climate fair. There's um, on electric vehicles, on uh, home heating and, and energy management, on um, solar panels um, and uh, electric bikes. <clears throat> Whisper bikes are there. Um, and and um, a number of businesses connected with food and drink as well. Uh, just showing off what they've got to, to what, they, what they're doing. Um, um, it's mainly aimed at the public, but um, businesses are, are, are likely to be there too, and there's a whole series of talks. Um, the, um, the, the, the climate fair organisers are still um, uh, keen to, I mean, we've got a number of sponsors, and you can see them on the banner over the high street, um, but anybody who'd like to sponsor a raffle prize would, would get their name advertised on the day. Um, if you, anybody would like to do that, be I would be very happy to hear from you. Um, um, but you know, um, people like Coolings have been really supportive in getting the whole thing together. Um, and you know, we, we there are a, there are quite a lot of businesses in the town who are part of the solution already. Um, and and getting them into this club is really, or this group is really quite an important thing to do. We just want to get more people in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fully agree with that. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, Laura, 
over to you. Is there anything else you would like to add for today's forum or what you would like for the future within something like this? No, I mean, obviously, I was appointed onto this forum uh, through a colleague uh, who you know, it's obviously looked at uh, events on the, the Seven Oaks Chamber of Commerce. Um, and obviously it was good for us to look at the the grant, the green business grant scheme, because obviously for us as a commercial business, that's the thing that's going to be most relevant. We've kind of gone through this process before from memory where we've applied for certain grants. We've, you know, we've changed all our lighting to LED. We've got PRI lighting. We've done, you know, um, obviously we've, We've got four buildings on a commercial estate, so there are various states in terms of kind of energy efficiency. Um, so it was good for me personally to hear about what was available there. Not so much with the um, the the residential and the you know commercial the other the property things because it's not really part of what we do as a business, but. Um, you know, if other local businesses could be included and knew that these forums were going on, then they would then also hear about these grants and these schemes and they might then um, want to, to join these forums. And and one of the things, um, we're based on a, um, a state in Borough Green um, and my, my director is actually a chairman of the estate here uh so they have a, an estate uh, planning team so i can ask her she was going to join today but she's actually they've, they've gone to an exhibition show in london today um sh uh, i can ask her to mention the forum to you know the other people on the estate to see if other businesses of kind of similar size or you know a slightly smaller size than us are interested in these kind of schemes you know and you know can take advantage of of those kind of things so well, that could be very useful from, from both sides on that, so that everybody's winning. And then just thinking about your own organisation, um, looking at disposing of products and so on, is that something that you also have to address as part of sustainability? Yeah, so uh, we're always looking at kind of different routes for disposal. So a lot of things, because we a lot of elect electronic equipment, we have to follow um, we disposal rules. Um, we use quite a lot of specialised companies that are based around kind of the southeast um, to dispose of a lot of our waste because we're not, you know, we can't dispose of that ourselves. Then obviously as part of our 14,001 accreditation, we've addressed our own internal recycling needs um, to make sure that we're recycling what we can, where we can. So it's always an ongoing concern. Um, and obviously having access to people who can support those kind of, um, those activities is, is a benefit as well, so. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you very much. And, and I guess we'll let me pick up on both your suggestions on there, thank you. Uh, Yaki, over to you. I don't know if you're still uh, able to speak back to us at Hi. the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're right at the beginning of our sustainability journey. So it's just interesting to hear all about um, the different ideas and different grants and different schemes, which um, will help in the future. Um, I found it quite interesting to hear about the um, um, about the renting out etc of, of buildings because we are we we own all of our building and so we try we're trying to make it more efficient but that can be quite hard so it's quite interesting to hear about the EPC um, and how uh, how the different legislation has affected that so yeah that it's it's just just knowledge really isn't it. So all of it is knowledge, um, whether that's useful, you can apply it right at this second or further on in your in your journey. So I found it all quite interesting. So I'll be looking up some of these, um, <clears throat> some of these um, businesses and grants, etc., and see how, if that fits into what we need and um, what we're doing. It's just obviously we've only got about a month me to have a look at it all so um i'll see if, if that fits into our plan but yeah it was it was interesting so thank you thank you thank you for those comments it's good. and without wishing to put you on the spot um would you be able to say whether you would be considering um some of the free energy audits that are available to organizations at the moment is that something that might be in this year's plan or you've already ventured along that route um 
you mentioning it, um, in my mind I'm thinking yes, um, and that would be something which would again be the trigger of, of the first the start of the journey um, because you need an audit as to how efficient you are so then you can fix those problems so yes that would probably be the, the first step on that but yeah I, I would consider that okay thank you very much thank you um marilyn back to you If there's something you would uh, wish to uh, either contribute further into this meeting or something that you would like us to consider for the future. No, she's gone offline for the moment. OK, I'll pop the same question to Andy instead then. Andy, anything else that you would like to add into this meeting or that you would like added into a future forum? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I, I, I'd just like to apologise for uh, coming in uh, late and missing what I think has been a, a key part um, uh, from the, um, uh, the, the the forum today. Um, I'll, I'll look forward to uh, trying to uh, listen to the uh, to the recording uh, and um, investigating the the, the grant. Um, just from uh, our uh, school's point of view, we're just starting on the, the sort of road uh, to net zero, um, if there is such a thing as, as net zero. Um, and we're looking at um, uh, an audit and a survey to baseline the school. Um, so uh, again, I was, I was interested in that last comment you were talking about free um, uh, audits. Um, because we're looking at quite a, um, a, a hefty bill to do to do one, uh, albeit it is a, uh, a very comprehensive report. Um, so again, if that was mentioned uh, previously, then um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and take that uh, uh, forward just to see what sort of level uh, that um, uh, is available. Um, with regards to uh, future forum meetings, um, I think I went to uh, one of the first uh, meetings that was held down at the Baton Ball station, um, uh, which I found uh, really, uh, really useful. Uh, and then, of course, I don't know whether we've actually had any physical meetings since since then because of uh, COVID. But um, uh, I'd be uh, I'd be up for um, you know um, uh, attending another. Uh, on-site uh, meeting, if that's uh, uh, in the mix at all. So just uh, to let people uh, know that. Uh, otherwise, I'll uh, I'll continue to try and uh, join uh, this. I think uh, the idea of uh, of of people giving examples of of um, uh, projects that they're doing to improve their uh, facilities um, within the the whole net zero uh, issue and also whether or not they've managed to get uh, any grants and this sort of thing, I think would be really useful because um, grants um, uh, we've always been uh, rather not wary of, but we're never quite sure whether we're entitled to certain grants because uh, you know, you'll get an email from a company saying, oh, it's an education in the establishment, you can apply for all these grants. And when you actually dig into it, of course, as an independent school, we're not entitled. It's uh, for the state sector only. Um, so there's always those questions as to whether you're entitled uh, to it. But if they are for businesses, then obviously we are a business. So um, I will I will look into that. One of the things that we are looking at doing uh, is expanding the amount of um, solar panels that we uh, that we have um, operating a pool 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, you know, we need all the help we can to uh, to keep that uh, going. Um, so um, nothing specific, uh, Dawn, but uh, I hope those uh, comments might uh, be of use. Mm, yeah, thank you very much indeed for that. And uh, Paul, I don't know if you wish to respond to Andy on that about the um, audits that I know that you've undertaken at various times and the free ones, The um, were they sufficient or did you then discover you had to go more in, in depth and then have to start paying for audits? Um, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't paid for any audits yet. We did take advantage of the free one from KCC um it focused mainly on 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 our um office i suppose the operation of wilden as opposed to 
all our um, letting portfolio. Um, I suppose it was it was it was um, useful. I don't want to sort of put put people off, but it probably told me what I already knew. In that the two the two biggest um, um, pollutants, for want of a better word, are the diesel van that we use and the gas uh, the gas boiler in the office. Um, if I really wanted to in in, in improve um, Wilden towards net um, zero, those are the two things that would need to be changed. Um, so yeah, I suppose it was it, it was useful just to have your your um, fears or thoughts confirmed. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we, had, we, we had the same sort of outcome from an audit we did for the town council. Mm -hmm. It told us things we already knew, but it actually put them in a sort of context which was helpful. Yeah. And um, also, um, Andy, uh, another chamber member is uh, Seven Oaks School, who have also ventured along the journey. I don't know if you're in touch with them because, you, again, your status would be relatively similar. Um, yes, we've not discussed. Time. I've I've um, I've met with their um, estates uh, manager. I think at one of these uh, events or at another uh, uh, event. So I I I understand that they like us are on the same uh, the same mm -hmm. journey. Obviously, they have a much larger estate uh, and a much more varied estate. Um, and you know, going back to um, you know Paul's uh, brief there. Um, trying to do work on a on a Victorian building, or in their case, uh, an even older building, um, you know, where where you're not allowed to change the windows or something like that, is going to be very problematic. Um, and therefore, um, that's why I say, you know, achieving net zero is going to be very very difficult for um, for certain uh, establishments because of the uh, the nature of their buildings. Um, you know, our building, whilst it looks very substantial. Um, when you actually get to the top, um, it's it's very thin. It's one brick thick, uh, and therefore all the heat goes out the uh, the top, not through the not through the uh, the attics because we have lots of insulation up there. But the next floor down, it just goes straight out the walls, uh, and therefore you're immediately looking at having to dry line um, the uh, the walls with a knock on effect on 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 size and availability, etc. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. yes i think you probably can't see the nods going around but there were people that were clearly sympathizing with you on that one <laughs> well, i understand seven oaks school are, are doing as a as a as a as a, as a project um getting getting a 17th century house to net zero or or 18th century house to net zero um with, you know without breaking all the planning rules which would be quite an interesting interesting project and I think if they manage it, they'll have something to teach all of us. Yes, very much so. <laughs> right. Um, Marilyn, um, I see you're back with us. Is there anything else you'd wish to contribute to this meeting or anything you'd like us uh, to have um, on the agenda for the next one? I think this, this is a continuing project. Uh, and we uh, get with the increasing urgency, we need to address it for a, a lot of the issues that have come up today. And thank you for arranging it. Uh, I'm sorry, I have an emergency to go and deal with now. <laughs> um, but thank you. And I would like to join in the next one, next meeting you have about this, because I think it's so important for so many businesses and so many uh, rented properties and stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll certainly have you on the mailing list. Thank um, you. Thank you. Uh, Emily, I can see your hand is raised. Yes, I just thought, Dawn, um, we've had talked lots about case studies here at, at this meeting, and I'm just wondering if for future meetings it would be useful for to have other businesses come along and tell their story and say, this is what worked for me, this is what I did. I don't know if you've done that at previous ones, but happy to work with you to see if we can identify some to to do that if it's useful. Mm, I think um, Paul, is the, is the first time we've had a presentation like this where it's actually taken principles and put them into practice. And uh, yes, I think it's incredibly valuable. And this is the way forward that we need to start sharing these ideas rather than everybody have to go through the same hoop each time. And it's, it's a way of inspiring others to see that something has worked and is achievable. 
So thank you. Yes, I'd like to very much work with you on that. It'd be wonderful. And uh, which is a beautiful link then to thank both you and Paul very much for the time you've given today and the examples that you have um, been able to share with us and hope that you will be able to give them, you know, again in the future. So unless there's anything else, uh, thank you very much. Oh, yes, Tony, sorry, I beg your pardon. Just to ask Dawn, could you possibly, um, I, I've just got a list of the, of the stall holders at, at the Climate Fair on Saturday and also of the talks. And I think the talks are probably going to be the most interesting bit because they're going to be uh, people saying what they've done. Um, they're not all from Seven Oaks, but there'll be people talking about you know things you can actually do. So if I send if I, if I mail it over to you, could you send it round? Most certainly. Yes, that okay. would be very I'll, I'll send it over now. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you very much, all of you, for your time today and look forward to discussing this further in the future. So take good care and thank you for your contributions. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.